In January 2016, I've published this circuit, a VHF oscillator tunable by its working point. Only consisting of a BD140 PMP transistor and with different values from C2, I could get to these frequencies. The with 100 picofarad the whole circuit worked at its best. I got some criticism on this circuit <coughs> and the most important part of that was that there is no high frequency decoupling. That means that the wiring here to the positive lead and the, this wiring here to the negative lead can act as a kind of coil that makes the whole circuit to oscillate. So I had to make a new circuit with high frequency decoupling and the first thing that I did was to make here a 100 nanofarad cap from the positive to the negative lead and also here a 220 nanofarad cap from the positive to the negative lead. In the first stage I had here a coil consisting of a few turns and tapped in the middle going back to the base and uh, that also worked good and I want to advise you to visit the channel from uh, the YouTube channel from Stone Slice for a proper built high frequency circuit. I did not make the first circuit in January 2016 in a proper way. It was a kind of sloppy, but Stone Slice made it in a very proper high frequency way with short wiring. And he also um, uh, mentioned good results from this oscillator. So the next thing was to decouple the circuit. And that's what I did. Here you see the decoupled circuit. BD139 here decouples the whole oscillator in a low frequency way because the amplification factor from the transistor may be multiplied with the value from this cap at the base and sa say that it is 100 and here we have 100 microfarad. So 100 times 100 that means that the oscillator sees an endless capacitor at its input like it is a battery here. That does not mean that no high frequencies are sent back into the power supply lead. That's the reason why I've mounted here a 100 nano cap and here a 220 nano farad cap and here a 100 nano cap. Uh, so the whole power supply lead say from here to the oscillator here is made dead for high frequencies. All high frequencies are suppressed here and when you study here the positive and the negative with the scope you will not find high frequencies emitted by the oscillator. So one of the criti critical points was that I made the circuit too big. And that meant that for instance you can have here a wire. This is copper plate but of course it can act as a wire, as a coil. Here the second experiment the same thing, disconnect as a wire. I made the old circuit a few times to be sure that it worked properly. This is also one experiment. Another experiment. Uh, 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 
a point of criticism could be that there is wiring here. That is a kind of stray wiring that acts as a coil. But whatever that may be, I made the circuit here in uh, a way with as low wiring as uh, I could think about. So here there is, uh, in my opinion, almost no wiring here that can disturb uh, the functioning from the circuit. Of course, the potentiometer here uh, could be also a coil. One of the uh, ideas that I've got. But uh, on the other hand, it's made in a very, very tiny way, as tiny as possible, and it still oscillates very, very properly on different frequencies. Now on 89 megahertz, I can tune the potentiometer now. I want to do that. Here you can see how it works. Higher and lower frequencies. I touch with one point from the screwdriver now the potentiometer, that means that you see all these disturbances. But you can see here that the whole circuit works properly. So I don't see any parasitic wiring here. The whole circuit is properly decoupled. And I'm very, very interested in a good explanation from this circuit, why it works and why it works so good. I wish you luck and perhaps someone can explain this circuit, why it works so good on different frequencies.